everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing you the basics of trigonometry. Now, what I'm going to be doing is showing it in a way that you can actually understand, unlike most schools which give you trigonometry in a way that you have to memorize. In this way it will make things easier, and in the future it will make proofs much easier too. Now one of the first things that we need to understand when we're beginning trigonometry is the unit circle. Okay, so here is our unit circle. The unit circle is a circle with a radius of 1, and it's located at the origin of a plane. So, what the unit circle is useful for? Well, it is useful for a lot of things, and one of the things that you can use the unit circle for is finding trigonometric identities. However, as of now, we're going to start with the two most basic trigonometric identities, which are sine and cosine. Now, each of these can actually be ex expressed in one way as another. However, what we're going to do is define what each of sine and cosine are. So let's say that the angle right here is theta. And we'll say that the height, the height of this triangle is sine, and the base of this triangle is cosine. Note that this triangle is a right triangle, and its hypotenuse is 1. Since we have a right triangle, we can immediately already define a trigonometric identity, which isn't that useful as of now. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we have sine of theta squared plus cosine of theta squared equals 1 squared. And that's just simply using the Pythagorean theorem. Now note, whenever the angle is theta, you just write sine of theta. However, we can abbreviate sine and cosine each to be sine and cos. I don't know how to pronounce that. Now it's time to define sine and cosine in a different way. So let's go back to our unit circle, which I have a new and bigger one right here. And we have one right triangle right here. So what we're going to do with our unit circle is we're going to create a triangle in the from the unit circle right here. And we're going to make a triangle that's similar to it, but it's just bigger. It's just a bigger right triangle. I'm going to make that better. That was pretty good. Okay, so here's our pretty lame triangle. It's a right triangle, and it's just similar to the triangle that we just drew. So we know that the, each of these are equal to cos of theta and sine of theta. And we also have the hypotenuse, which is 1. Now let's say that we scale this entire diagram up by 2. So the triangle would just be the same but just twice as big, which means that each of its, each of its sides would be multiplied by 2. So we have 2 times cos of theta, 2 times sine of theta, and 2. Now, let's see what the ratio of the height to the hypotenuse is. Let's see wh what it is. So we have the height over the hypotenuse, which is 2, and that's equal to sine of theta. Whoops, I forgot to add a line in the zeros. So we have sine of theta. Now we can do the same thing with our cosine. We, we divide, the we make a ratio of the base to the hypotenuse. So once we do that, we have each of the values sine of theta and cos of theta. Now what if we made this triangle just an arbitrary triangle that's also similar, however we just multiplied the sides by an arbitrary va variable k. So we have the hypotenuse is k, the height is k times sine of theta, and the base is k 
times cosine of theta. And what we have from that is actually the same thing as before. If we take a ratio of the height to the hypotenuse, we'll have k sine of theta over k equals sine of theta. Now, what we can see right here is we can make a definition for what sine is and cosine is for an any right triangle. So, let's just draw a random right triangle. And we can say that its sides are A, B, and C. And we'll call this angle theta. What we have right here is uh, the sine of theta is A over C, and the cosine of theta is B over C. So right here we have actually two definitions for what sine theta and cos theta could be. And let's add in another function of another trigonometric function, tangent. Tangent can just be simplified to tan, or T-A-N, and the tan of an angle theta is actually just sine of theta, sorry, yeah, sine of theta over cos of theta. And what this becomes is actually A over B. And so let's go back to what I said before about SOKATOA, because this is actually a useful way to memorize things. I used to use it, but now I'm already familiar with the trigonometric function, so I really don't need to use it anymore. But it's a pretty ne neat way to memorize the, each of the three basic trigonometric functions. So SO stands for sine opposite and hypotenuse. I don't know if I spelled that right, but we have three sine opposite and hypotenuse. So what this stands for is sine of theta equals opposite over the hypotenuse. And the A in ka stands for adjacent. So if we just put them all together, we have sine opposite hypotenuse, cosine adjacent hypotenuse, tangent opposite adjacent. So by opposite and adjacent, we mean the side that's opposite of the angle. And by adjacent, we mean the side that's adjacent to angle theta. Okay, so before I end, I have one more trigonometric identity that we can prove. And this is actually kind of the same as the identity that we proved earlier. So here's our circle. We have two lines. And it's on a plane. So this one is actually pretty simple. And so let's say that we have one angle right here, theta, and we have another one right here, which we'll call theta plus 180 degrees. So this means that we went all the way around by 180 degrees. So the question is, what is the cosine of theta plus 180. And what is the sine of theta plus 180? And these are pretty simple. As you can see, all we've done is rotated the right triangle right here by 180 degrees, the whole thing. So the cosine is the same. Cosine of 
theta plus 180 equals cosine of theta. And the sine of theta plus 180 is actually just the negative of sine of theta. And here's one more. What is the cosine of theta plus 90? Which means we'll be rotating the, this part by just 90 degrees, the hypotenuse. So now we have a right triangle that's like this. What happens is actually the sine and the cosine actually kind of switch. So cosine plus theta plus 90 is actually sine of theta. And the sine of theta plus 90 degrees is just cosine of theta. However, we need to realize that whenever we're doing this, sine of theta plus 90 is actually the negative of cosine plus cosine of theta. So as you can see, the unit circle is actually really useful and some schools just don't teach it. I don't know. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll be making more videos on trigonometric identities soon. So be sure to watch and keep out. Also make sure to subscribe and thanks for watching.